board will be given the opportunity to vote next Sunday. So I just wanted to clarify that right now. Uh, the other thing is, why don't we have a seat cut? Look at um, A number of people have uh, sent questions in uh, to Dr. Or Pastor Tom, or Todd. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> we're going to start with some of the questions that were sent into the church earlier this week, and we'll start with that, and then we'll open it up to uh, those of you that have questions. Yeah. Pastor Bob. Amen. Can I open us in prayer? Sure. All right. Let me pray. Father, thank you again for uh, bringing your people together to gather, to worship, and to lift your name on high. Lord, we even during this time, we want to continue to, to glorify, to lift your name, Jesus, and uh, to continue to be led by you. And uh, so be in our time as we talk and have questions, answers, these kind of things. I pray that you would be in the center of it all. Uh, it's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, yes, I did. Um, I have one person, really, to, that asked multiple questions to get our time started, and then I guess we'll open it up to uh, those here after our answers. Um, this person had some um, theological questions first. Um, he wanted to know first, um, what are your uh, core beliefs about the Bible's authority and its role in shaping your ministry? Um, you know, and I won't give long, drawn-out answers here. I could give, I could give a lot and to um, share a lot about this. But I, I believe the Word of God is the final authority uh, for our lives. It is all 66 books in the scriptures are inspired by God and gives us direction uh, and guidance and how we are to live in life, how we are to do ministry. And so for me, I will be looking to this, to looking to the Word of God to help me in our ministry uh, in the ministry of the church, in the ministry that we do individually, in our personal lives. Uh, I never want to go outside of the Bible uh, and thinking that there's other, you know, there is, there is some good maybe wisdom on other kind of teachings and plans and strategies, but I'm going to be really heavily looking to the scriptures uh, for my guidance and because I, I believe this is the truth of God's word. This is where we find guidance in everything we do in life. So, I believe it's all sufficient. It's the final authority in our lives that we should uh, to know God and how to live for God. Um, he said, number two, how do you describe your understanding of salvation and the gospel message? I hope you heard it this morning. But in simple, I think about 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, the Apostle Paul said this, I want to remind you of the gospel, he says in 1 Corinthians 15. And that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he raised again. Um, and again, the reason for his resurrection is to prove that he was the one to conquer sin and death itself when we believe in him. So that's what I believe, that what Jesus did on the cross paid for our, all of our sins that separates us from God. That's, that's why he came and he died for us. So that's the gospel, the good news that even though we were separated in the Romans 6, even though we were dead in our trespasses and sin, he would die for us. Um, give us the gift of salvation so we can have a forever relationship with him. Um, and a, a bigger question he asks here, what is your view on the Trinity and how would you explain it to the congregation? Now, this one's a big one, and uh, this may take a little bit longer. And I would say first, it's a mystery. Uh, it truly is, but uh, I believe in my heart. We come uh, to worship you know, this morning. Uh, the God of the Bible is a triune God, um, three persons, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one. Eternally existed from the beginning until now. Um, you know, I don't believe in any polytheism, that we would worship, you know, three gods. No, the Bible even says that God is one. Um, so we worship one God, but he is, you know, distinct in his character, represent in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I, I, I want to, um, I did have a little prep on this one, and so uh, I want to share some scripture here. I, in multiple places, um, we see 
I think I have it here. I don't. Where did I have it? Um, well, I'll I'll just pull it up. I know where it's at. Um, I think about Jesus' baptism, and here we have the picture of the Trinity. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately, um, you know, it says he went up from the water. This is in Matthew chapter three. And behold, the heavens were open to him. So first we have the picture of Jesus, the Son. And then it says, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, coming to rest on him. There's the Spirit. And then behold, a voice from heaven said, we hear the Father, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am pleased. So we have the picture. And again, this is a mystery. It's an amazing thing. But that this is the God that we worship, a triune God. Um, I... I want to, I think about in the passage that I read this morning, that we are to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is who our God is. Um, I think, again, in um, John chapter 14, uh, this is, and Jesus showing his, um, you know, equality with that, that Jesus was God and is God. Um, this is interesting. I love this. And this is, again, gives us relation and kind of we identify with people in the Bible because here Philip, one of the disciples, says, said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Just show it. Jesus, show us the Father God. And Jesus' response said to him, he says, have I not been with you so long and you still don't know me, Philip? He says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? So again, he showed his, co- you know, his, he was equal. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. And then he goes on, he says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Again, he's, he's showing this, that he was God. Uh, God in fire. And then the Holy Spirit, I, I love the, um, the picture here. I think in, uh, in the beginning of 1 Peter, it, it shows the reason for the, really the Spirit that lives in us. Ultimately, it's for our betterment to be the people of God that he's made to be. But Peter starts off his letter this way. Um, he says, according, he says, to those who are the uh, elect, the exiles of the dispersion of the Pontus and Galatia. And then he goes on, he says, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for the obedience to Jesus Christ, and for the sprinkling of his blood. Again, you know, the apostles they are showing the Trinity, even in their greetings and understanding, but the Spirit. For the sanctification, Jesus said that the Spirit would convict us of sin, lead us into all truth, help us to be the men and women of God. And so this is who our God is. You know, the the distinct roles, yes, but God that we worship, triune, um, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Again, that we could go on and on, and I know, again, we don't have time, but a little bit, and I, I believe wholeheartedly in the Trinity, even though, I mean, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, just so you all know that, but that's a word that we use to help us to understand our God. Um, there's many other illustrations that have uh, been said to help us to understand, but some of them I feel like don't really fully explain what the Trinity is. Okay, I'm sorry, I went on on that for a little while. Here, another thing um, he asks about the stewardship and finances, and um, He says, how do you view the responsibility of the church in managing its financial resources? Maybe I'll read them more because I think they're all tied together here. What measures would you implement to ensure transparency and accountability in handling the church finances? Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of put those. So my heart is I know that here in this congregation, you give sacrificially to help to build the kingdom of God, to help to grow the church and to reach people for Jesus. And I don't want to take that lightly. I know that you give of your hard-earned income to help the church, to help further the kingdom of God. Ultimately, we do it all as a form of worship to God. That's why we give, you know, our tithes and offerings as a worship. You know, saying that you're in control of everything. And again, I I just say that because I, I understand that many of you, you give sacrificially. And so I want to be a good steward of that. I don't want to spend things frivolously and for no purpose. Um, I want to also 
make it aware as this was asking about the transparency. I want you all to know how we are spending the money, what we are doing. I want to be open with that. Uh, honestly, I, I need the help and I appreciate the elders here. Um, I want their involvement in all of this too. Uh, I don't want to um, keep that, you know, in a sense to myself or even, you know, just for the elders, though I need the help of that. But I want everyone to know of what we're doing and how we can collectively, you know, build God's kingdom with the resources that he has entrusted to us to help further and to spread the gospel and to reach more people for Jesus. So in the end, I, I want to be open with that, with everyone uh, to let people know. And hopefully it would encourage you. We would be encouraging one another with that, thinking, okay, this is what we're investing in together to help build the kingdom of God. He also asked, um, could you kindly share your views on how you envision balancing pastoral responsibilities with the practical aspects of daily management and running the church effectively, including financial stewardship? This is a good question. I think I'm always needing help in balance <laughs> and making sure that I'm not, um, you know, doing too much in one area than the other. Um, you know, you know, as a, as a pastor, I want to make sure I am preaching God's word um, effectively and clearly so that you can be encouraged and have faith deepen in your life. And hopefully, as you would leave this place, you would be encouraged to live for God wherever he places you, as I was sharing this earlier. So I want to, I hope to invest time in that. Um, I know there are other responsibilities that I need to do as a pastor in the church that involves, you know, the word of God and these kind of things. So I, in hopes to balance that and hopefully to have others, I, I, will, I will say this. I can't do the, the work of the ministry on my own. <laughs> I need others. And I'm grateful for, I know, not only the elders and the trustees um, to help with that. And I will look to them um, for guidance and wisdom, uh, really valuing their input. Um, I really would um, um, invite them to, to speak into these things so that we are doing this together and it's not just me doing it, because I recommend, I can't do this on my own in that way, uh, along with the financial stewardship too. I don't want to take that on my own. I hope that answers those questions. I know he's not here, so maybe we can go on Thank from there. The yeah. When, when we received that uh, email, we thought there's a, a lot of good meat in that, and this is not a person that's an officer in the church, right? this is just, this is one of the members. And so uh, uh, we just wanted to get that out there because it might answer a lot of your questions. And so uh, at, at this time, we would like to open it up to you. So raise your hand and we can address it, address your question. Oh. <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't have to be theological or something deep because you're thinking, oh, I couldn't ask that. You can ask whatever, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Yeah, I appreciate already. Uh, you've already shown me lots of care, care to me and to my family. Um, I appreciate to continue that and to help, um, you know, us, if it is for us to do this, to transition well um, and to maybe, um, I, I would encourage, uh, be gracious. Um, I may not always remember all of your names at first, but um, I do want to remember and to care for you well and to, to help. Um, and then, you know, in the midst of, I think, you know, we all have different gifts and abilities that God has given to us, uh, different, you know, personalities and these kind of things that I would ask, you know, let's, let's work with one another and I have my own personality and, and different things and, and gifts that God has given to me. Um, let's work together and let's 
utilize those things and realize how we can better one another. I mean, that's the body of Christ. That's what the Word of God says, that the church is the body of Christ. And, and, it, and it even says that the, the hand can't say to the foot, I no longer need you. No, we need you. Um, because if, if the hand leaves, then we're missing something. Um, we need your gifts and talents, even if it is so specific and something that you need to, you know, uh, are, are able to do, we need you. And I would say, please, um, step into that. Um, be used of God. Uh, he wants to use you. And I would want to encourage that because that's, that's the beauty of the church, the community of believers when they work together as the body of Christ, that the hand is doing this and the foot is doing that and the, the leg is doing that and these kind of things are happening all together and then we get care from one another. Yeah, I uh, thank you for that question. It's a good question, and I tell you, they unfortunately, um, the world is teaching contrary to what the Bible says of what our sexuality is to be. Um, you know, we the Bible says that you know homosexuality and these kind of things are a sin against God. Um, marriage is supposed to be between one a man and a woman. Um, this is against God's plan. And ultimately, I believe when we go against God's plan, it leads to destruction and hurt and pain. Um, that's why we need to be steadfast in the Lord and in his truth to remain steadfast um, so that um, you know, we can bring, be bearers of life and of what he wants for us so to help people to experience that. But unfortunately... There is blinders in the world, and the enemy is blinding them and leading them on the path that leads to destruction. I mean, the Bible says that the enemy prowls around like a warring lion looking for someone to devour. He's not just wanting to maim or just to hurt them a little bit. He's looking to destroy their life. And unfortunately, with sexuality, he's using that to destroy people. And um, it's contrary to God's word. And this is what I, I, I base on. It's not my opinion. I, never, I, I hope people hear that. And I know maybe there's some that you have in your family that um, may struggle with that. This is not my opinion. This is, this is what God says. But again, I, I tell you, it brings life when we follow God's plan. Um, contrary to that, it, it brings destruction. And there's no peace in that way. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. He asked if, and I'm not quite sure what the, I mean, the question was, you know, um, you know, the world is talking about uh, sexuality that is, um, you know, marriage between a man, a man, woman, woman, a, you know, homosexuality, the, those kind of things that are being taught. What do I believe? And that's what I shared. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Amen. No, I understand, and it, yeah, it's it's a lot, it's a lot, yeah, yeah, amen. And I appreciate your heart and wanting to to care and to love those who are struggling with this, and that's what the church is supposed to do. I, you know, a, a, another pastor friend of mine says that the church 
is, is a hospital. It's for those who are broken and hurting and we're to bring help and healing that not comes from us, but comes from God. And uh, he's the one who brings that. And so we, we need to love those um, that are struggling with that. And you're right. Uh, there are many here, me including, sitting up here that we struggle with sin. I mean, the Bible says if we claim to be without sin, we're a liar. Um, but the, it goes on. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I, I, I think we want to lead people to the love and the grace of Jesus, um, helping them to see God's plan. Um, like I shared in the sermon, it's got to be God's work. You know, we plant we water, but God brings the growth. And we trust the Lord to do that. So we, you know, share with the love of God. You know, Ephesians 4 says, you speak the truth in love. Not with a, you know, heavy hammer or, you know, but in love. And that's hard. And I think sometimes, depending on who's hearing it, they may determine whether you're speaking in love or not. You know, and that's unfortunate. And I've had conversations with people where they felt I wasn't loving I tried to be, and I want to love them where they're at. Um, that's where Jesus met people when they were caught in adultery and sexual sin, and he came to them and pulled and said, I love you, and I want you to follow my plan. And then he, and he would tell them, sin no more. Follow that, you know, in that way. And that's what we're, we want to help people to get to that point. It doesn't happen right away, right? It can't. It, it's hard. And so we want to move people to that and love them. In that. So I would say love and care for them, but help them to see God's plan. Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, the question is, um, you know, I guess, how is the church helping with social needs in our local community of Jackson? Um, and, you know, I, I hope the church can be a resource. I hope that we will try to make efforts to connect with, you know, wherever the connection are. I think about schools um, and, you know, maybe county services that there, there is, you know, there is, you know, services that, you know, the, the county, the city, the state offer. Um, but I, I hope that we can also be considered that we are also have our, you know, our doors open to say, hey, we can be a resource, too, to help. Maybe it's providing, you know, some need for that family. But my, I will say in everything, in every social service that we would be involved with, I never want it to be um, that, that we would compromise the gospel, that we would water down um, what we as a church stand for ultimately to lift up the name of Jesus, to help people. Because, you know, if you feed their bellies and they're still going to hell, what good is that? I mean, you, you fed them temporarily. You know, you gave them nourishment. I get it, and I, and I think that's good. But what about their soul? What about the spiritual state of where they're going through? So I hope that we would also, whatever we get involved with, that we would also help them to see the salvation that's found in Jesus Christ, the hope of Jesus, that they can be in a forever relationship with Jesus um, in the midst of their belly being full or, you know, helping them with, you know, housing or whatever it is that they're helping with. But they're also learning about Jesus and, le and, and learning about the gospel of Christ. Yeah. He's over there in the corner. Amen.
Yes. Well, I, um, I have some background in that, though, you know, the role that I'm fulfilling is not in, is not for the youth ministry. We do have a wonderful um, uh, youth pastor back there, uh, Moby. <laughs> so maybe to, to connect with him, too, and, and he would love to probably tell you his heart. I know I've just been meeting with him, you know, just briefly a couple days here, and uh, I know that, you know, even just... Yesterday, I met with him, and I remember sitting across the table from Moby, and he says, I want them to meet Jesus. Uh, I want them to encounter Christ, and I so appreciated that. But he also wanted to meet them where they're at, and, he's, and he thinks of ways of how to do that and to meet them where they're at and, and to connect with them and make it fun and exciting. So that's, that's what I would want, and I know I've done youth ministry. Um, I, I share briefly, I did actually youth ministry in a different kind of a church, a Chinese church. So these were second generation kids. They were, you know, American kids, but they grew up in a first generation Chinese family. Anyways, they were still American kids, teenagers to the core. And, um, you know, they had different issues and went through struggles. Um, and so my heart was, I want, you know, in everything that I do, I wanted to care for them. I want to meet them where they're at. And uh, even, I mean going to their sporting events and saying I'm behind them, but then also, hey, I'm also your cheerleader to be steadfast in, you know, the truth of what you see in the Bible, because I know students are telling you other things and um, trying to dissuade you to do things that are contrary to God's word and displeases the Lord, and I would, you know, continue to help them to, hey, you're not alone, you know, don't, don't give up on that, and that's why the church is so important to help us to get strengthen that. But I, I, there's a balance, especially in youth ministry. I mean, make it fun and exciting and engaging. And I would, and I think Moby's doing that. I really do. He's, um, I even seen when I came here on Friday night, he was having fun with the kids and just playing with them and spending time, but also wants to point them to Jesus, you know, so. I just wanted to get back to your question about our involvement in the community. Uh, Michael and Ted Salzberg have a, a ministry program for several people here in the church have been involved with helping the homeless men in Africa. And so that is one program. Carrie had her pro uh, program that was in the uh, inner city of Canton using a church down there. And we were providing supplies and, and money donations and people. And I'm not sure, I know that that church has asked them to move out for one reason or another. And uh, at one time, uh, there was a group of people here that helped build showers down there. Recently, uh, uh, Ron Wilson and his small group uh, did a um, bread and milk and peanut butter handout at a grocery store in downtown Maslin about two weeks ago. So it, those things are going on here. Uh, it's not that we put a wall around us and we're just for Jackson Township. So. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, he, he was saying that, you know, what would um, we, you know, as a church and what would I would, uh, preach on, um, you know, maybe some churches avoid like the literal hell and uh, his second coming. I would, I would love to preach on those things, and I believe that there is a hell, and that's why it's so important for us to understand uh, our, our role in telling people about God's rescue, his plan of redemption to rescue us out from darkness and bringing us into his marvelous light. I would welcome to preach on that someday. I would love to preach on his second coming. He is coming again. The end of Revelation, the last book of the Bible says, behold, I'm coming soon. And we should wait in expecting, not knowing the hour, because the Bible says he'll come like a thief. If you find someone that says, I know when Jesus is going to come, I would be a little, uh, no. We don't know, but we know he's coming back soon. And we wait in expecting, believing that, longing for that day, because then we'll be face to face with our Creator.
Amen. It's a good question. It's a convicting question. Uh, the question, I'm sorry. I, the question is, what do, what do I do to guard, um, guard my personal integrity and guard you know, protection for my family to make sure that I'm taking care of my family um, as a pastor of the church? And I thank you. Um, I want to do that well. I, tr I try with all my heart to try to honor my family, uh, taking time off and spending time with my family. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be open and honest. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, we have gotten, we try to get in the habit as a family to do devotions together, to read the Bible, to pray together. You know, summertime, you get out of the, the rhythm of that. And I'm like, I just tell an Amy, I'm like, we got we to gotta get back in the rhythm of that because summertime, the kids, you know, they want to be at their friend's house, going swimming at their someone else's pool or whatever, and they're out. And, uh, but I, I want my heart is to, to have that personal time with my family so that we pray together, we read the word together, um, and that we spend time together. And I, I really, I do value, you know, taking time off to go with my family um, we actually are, we love to go camping. I think I forgot to mention that. Did I mention that? We like to go camping together. And um, we even just plan next week, we're going to, not next week, two weeks, um, we're going camping for three days. Um, and we try to do that, to be together just as a family and to honor that. So I, I try to protect that, but I think I need um, continued reminder uh, to do that better. So she asks what, uh, what it is uh, with Jackson Friends Church that um, drew me here as well as wanting to be a part of this church. I tell you, I, I want to say, you know, and I don't want to say this in a cliche way or, you know, quick, a quick answer. Um, but first, God has drawn me here and um, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And... Um, it came about where my you know, current church that I serve with has been going through uh, a leadership transition. Well, they, we have been, and even going through a whole ministry model change. And it led me to think about, you know, is there a next step for me that I need to take? And um, this, you know, I, where I go to my current church, you all know I, I serve at the chapel, Akron. And so I take this... Um, Road, Arlington Road, and I pass this, you know, church many times, many, many times. And I see, I saw on the sign here that one day had an interim pastor with Dr. Tom, and then um, I was, you know, um, I, 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 every time I passed here, I was thinking, God, is this where I should be? Is this where I should be? And I, you know, inquired, and even being here, and, and I live in Canal Fulton, I mean, just on this road. My wife has told me it's only seven minutes from here. Uh, my house is only seven minutes away. It feels like this would be home, you know? This would be where I would need to serve. And I, I look forward to thinking about building more in my local community because where I served, it wasn't my local community. Though we lived in Akron for a good number of years, but... Um, I look forward to thinking about ministering in my local community. It's like I've, this could be where God has me to be. I don't know. So I'm just saying. So there's just, there's a lot of things God has been interweaving and moving in that. And I'm excited to think about what the future would hold for me to minister here in this community. Yes, yes, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I mentioned I served as a, oh, so she was asking what um, previous roles and experiences have I had uh, in my different ministries and jobs. And I served as a, you know, a youth pastor 
Um, you know, with a Chinese church. I actually, I volunteered in youth ministry even before that um, at, a, at another church for a good number of years, um, serving the youth, leading Bible studies, leading actually music and worship. I did that. I actually did a lot of that um, even with the, the Chinese youth uh, making, I actually was encouraging them because many, in, again, this is a Chinese cultural thing, uh, many of the Chinese students learn violin, and I was helping to incorporate their, unfortunately, a lot of times their parents making them learn violin, but I was helping them to use it for the Lord. And so they would, um, I would, you know, actually, I made music. Though I, I read sheet music. Jeff, you would, you would laugh at me because Jeff, I grew up with Jeff, and we went, we were, did band together in high school, and um, I actually made music on on Excel spreadsheets with the letters, not notes. <laughs> and but it worked. It worked. It worked well. Anyway, <laughs> and I would do that for violin. I did that for. Um, you know, different instruments for them to be participating in music and worship. I, I served, um, I was actually telling someone that I talked with, they knew um, Todd McKinney, who is now Judge McKinney in, um, I think in Summit County, I, I forget where he serves, but in Barberton, okay, in Barberton. Um, he mentored me and I served with him in doing benevolent ministry, helping, talking about helping the homeless and doing other, how the church was involved in the community. I worked with him in doing that. Along with that, I also served in international student ministries, reaching out to foreigners that were either studying at the University of Akron or, um, you know, they find they were working. Some of them were doing their postdoc work at, at Akron, at the University of Akron, reaching them um, with the gospel, uh, which was an interesting, you know, kind of subset of people um, it was amazing to see the world coming to our doorstep in such a way. So I would um, do that ministry. Um, I did also, I served in, um, well, along with my work at the chapel, I did a lot of different, you know, care ministry, visiting the sick, these kind of things. I'm now serving as the care and counseling pastor at the chapel, uh, doing counseling ministry, um, care you know, weddings and funerals, all of those things. I did that before I had the title of care pastor, but, um, and then I served for eight years as the missions pastor. And so I overseed our global ministries and actually it was for all of the chapel at the time, which was seven campuses. We were all involved in uh, global ministries and doing, you know, we supported at one time we had, I think, um, over 60 missionaries and we were um, overseeing, different countries that we did partnerships in helping to plant churches in countries. And I traveled, I had the privilege of traveling, I think 12 or 13 different countries and doing that work in that way. So there's just a little summary. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. 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 So in, in each of those roles, I mean, I had different, um, I guess, staff that were over me. So I had a different variety. I mean, when I think the biggest I had with when I was over the global ministries was like a, you know, we had staff slash I call them volunteer staff, even though they were volunteers. We I really raised them up as almost like staff in the church. And there was probably about 12 to 13 uh, different people that were under me and, um, you know, that I was leading and they were doing specific areas in not only global missions, but local, uh, local outreach ministries. And we did uh, work in three different schools, kind of similar. I talked with Michael about doing Good News Club in, uh, you know, one of the elementary schools uh, of Jackson. So I helped oversee that and the many volunteers that were a part of that. So I I guess, you know, and I mean, with the global ministries, I was responsible for, I think it was like 2.2 or I don't know, 2 million or so budget. And so I oversee that budget. Um, yeah, and all of that stuff. So, yeah, yeah.
So she asked, you know, I was involved with the Alive Festival. Maybe some of you saw, which I didn't know, that I guess on the Jackson Friends Facebook page, uh, there was a picture of me baptizing people in Atwood Lake. And that was true. I did that. Uh, we had 100 people uh, believe in Jesus and get baptized there at the Alive Christian Music Festival. If you don't know, it's a, um, it's a Christian music festival that happens at Atwood Lake. I've been involved for many years. Actually, I mean, uh, Lori, I don't know where you're at. I'm, um, there she is. <laughs> she remembers we used to, the Alive Festival office used to be in the basement of the church in the Java House area, and I was here. And I came every day here, and um, I actually worked for the Alive Festival in doing graphic design and helped with their computers. Like I said, I, I do like tech stuff, and I like to learn and to do things. Um, and so I, I helped the Alive Festival in many areas. I was actually their only employee for many, many years. Um, I think it was nine years or something like that, eight or nine years. And, um, and so I worked here until there was a flood. If some of you remember, there was a water main break, and it hit our office, and it was terrible. All the computers and papers and everything was... I think it was destroyed. I don't know. It was, a, it was a really stressful time, and I felt bad because, you know, it, I was the only employee, and I had to take care of it, all that stuff. <laughs> but um, so I, I got involved that way, and, and then now since I, you know, I felt the, after that, I felt the call to go uh, into full-time ministry, and, and, and then I left the Live Festival, but I continued my connection by participating in the prayer tent ministry. And I, I was telling Amy, I think I've been doing that for over 15 years or so. Um, and uh, just, I, I lead the prayer tent ministry um, when they give an invitation of faith to accept Christ. Uh, I'm there with some other volunteers to be ready to pray with people, uh, to receive Jesus in their life and help them, encourage them to get connected to a local church to grow. And, and then I lead a baptism service. We do baptism actually on two days, and um, I lead that service. So I, I love doing that. It's kind of a, a, I love doing outreach. I actually also, another thing that I do along like with the Life Festival, I speak at the Haven of Rest, which is a uh, homeless ministry in downtown Akron. And I, I go there, like this month, I'll, I, I go there three times this month, and I preach uh, at their uh, chapel service before they eat lunch. And I just, 15 minutes, I share the gospel and help these men and women who are struggling to understand the hope of Jesus and, and then encourage them. Sometimes I eat lunch with them, and sometimes I'm not able to eat lunch, but I do that as well, so... Yes. Yes. Yeah. My style would, I, I, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to delegate. Um, I like to um, work together um, and not, you know, being a one person doing all the work, um, but to really um, being a collective working together and, and helping with that. Um, I, I like to hear the input of others uh, rather than just, you know, maybe a few, but hearing the input of others and helping to then implement um, a plan and understanding what the, the collective understanding and things that are happening. So that's more my, I rather um, work together with people rather on my own. I want to thank Kathleen for these beautiful flowers. I don't know if it made it. I don't know if it made it. <laughs> I, I helped John bring in one pot of flowers because he was amazing, but these are beautiful flowers. And yeah. <laughs> yes. So she said, um, you know, should the priority of the church be about growing the numbers of people in the pews, in the church? And um, I mean, there's a balance here, I think. I, 
I don't want to be just about the numbers. Um, because Jesus said, what did he say? I, I read it this morning, Matthew 20, make disciples. We don't, we don't make converts. Uh, and that's just, you know, again, sharing the gospel and they hear about Jesus. And yeah, they believe, but they got to grow. And we got to make disciples. And honestly, sometimes when they profess it, it really doesn't take root if you're not teaching them, baptizing them, these kind of things that God told us to do. So I want to make disciples. I don't want to make converts, you know. And so that I hope to grow the, the church in that way. And I think an outcome of that, if you're really making disciples, like I showed you the pattern where it was they believed, they were baptized, then they grew in the community of believers, and then they taught others, and they testified of the salvation. That will, it should, it would, they will grow to the church. I mean, we even read in the book of Acts where it says, the Lord added to their numbers daily because they were growing, and people were hearing about the good news of Jesus. So it will grow. But I don't want that to be, you know, I'm thinking I need to get more people in these seats, and that's how I'll see success for the church. I hope to see success in the church because I see faith that is deep. I see people that are connecting with Jesus. And I tell you, if, if we really see that, you're going to see more people here because it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to exude from our lives in some way, in that way. So that's what I hope. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Yes, yeah. Okay, if you would all please stand for our closing prayer. We want to thank all of you for coming out for this Q&A. Uh, your attendance here today is a testament to your concern Amen. for the future growth of us here at Jackson Point. Yeah, thank you. Let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for, God, you first what you did in Jesus, sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, rise again. We stand here saying, we believe and follow you. And now, Father, I pray that you would continue to guide and direct our paths. Help us to grow as men and women of God that follow after you, that love you, that exude you in everything that we say, everything we do, everything we put our hands to, O oh God. Let it be a reflection of your goodness, of your hope, of your love in our lives. Strengthen us, I pray. Pray you go with each one and bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.